Hello. Welcome to the Fall 2021 D2K Showcase. We are super excited to have you here in person, finally, after so much time. Um, it's great to see all of your faces and enthusiasm for data science. Um, I'm excited to talk with all of you. So let's get started. First, let me briefly introduce myself. I'm Ginevra Allen. I'm the founder and director of the Rice D2K Lab, officially the Center for Transforming Data to Knowledge, but we call it the D2K Lab. And I'm a professor here at Rice in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. So let me tell you a little bit about the D2K Lab and what you're going to see tonight at the showcase. So the D2K Lab is a data science center that was founded four years ago in 2018 with a generous gift from Catherine and Kevin Harvey. The Rice D2K Lab's mission was to promote interdisciplinary and immersive data science education by giving students opportunities to work on real world challenges during their time at Rice, and also to help partners solve their challenges in data science and machine learning by partnering with us on student projects and student teams. What you're gonna see tonight are some of the teams presenting their end of semester work on their results. So let me tell you a little bit more about what you're going to see tonight. So we actually have three groups of students presenting their work. Uh, we have Rice uh, caps, uh, D2K capstone teams, which I'll explain in a little bit. We have introductory data science teams, and we have students from the Rice Data Science Club presenting their deep projects. We actually have 21 teams here, and interestingly, this is truly interdisciplinary. We have 17 different majors represented amongst the students presenting here today. So these are not just computer science, statistics, electrical engineering, applied math students. These are also students from across the university. So we're really excited about that and excited to see their work. So to introduce uh, the introductory data science teams that you're going to see, I'm going to hand this over to Sue Chen, who is an assistant teaching professor in the D2K lab. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm super excited to be here and introduce you to um, all of our introduction to data science teams. So um, these are students who enrolled in my course, DSci 101, Introduction to Data Science. And we started um, a year ago in fall 2020, we started with two teams. It has been a great journey to witness the growing demand and popularity of data science. Um, and our goal is to make data science education accessible to every right student through DSci 101 and also opportunities like this. So this semester, we're super excited to have 10 intro teams. Um, and these are students, mostly freshmen, or students with no prior experience in data science. Within one semester, they are able to learn um, the fundamental knowledge and technical skills to be able to analyze real data and complete a project. The students selected their own data set, and due to the diverse background and um, broad interest of the students, the topic of their project include sports analytics, finance, um, public health, education, and um, political science. So please spend some time to check out their poster presentation um, and vote for your favorite team. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Yes, so I should mention that this, this is actual also a competition and there's an audience choice award, um, which will show you uh, the QR code afterwards. So please do check out the introductory data science teams and vote for your favorite team. There will be an audience choice award afterwards. We also have teams from the Rice Data Science Club and we have, uh, is Jamie Chen here? Ah, oh, Jamie, you wanna run up? <laughs> Okay, Vinay, you want to run up and, and say a few words about Deep, please. Yeah, so this is the third year that the Rice Data Science Club has run the Deep program, which stands for Data Education and Exploration Program. 
And so it's basically an extracurricular opportunity that's in the form of a workshop series where members of the Rice Data Science Club can share their knowledge about different steps of the data science pipeline to interested Rice students. And then through a kind of project-based learning experience, all of the attendees of the workshop can run data analyses of their own. And so this year we had 12 teams in total participating in DEEP, and we have two teams here at the showcase that are presenting their work related to COVID-19 in Texas and police related violence. So I'm really excited to see their work being on display here at the showcase. Okay. Um, and we also finally have students from the D2K capstone program presenting their work. So this capstone program is a at the culmination of their careers here at Rice. Um, it's open to both undergraduate and graduate students. We typically have advanced undergrads, juniors and seniors, master students, and even beginning PhD students come into our capstone program. In the capstone program, teams, interdisciplinary teams of students work on real world data science challenges that were brought in by one of our partner organizations. These could be companies, nonprofits, government agencies, uh, researchers in healthcare, researchers from Rice, and many other places. The goal of this capstone program is to give students during their time at Rice a, a taste of the real world and kind of working on a long term, larger scale project to make an impact using data science and machine learning skills. And what's really unique about this capstone program is there's not just one degree program that feeds into this capstone. This isn't just for data science students or computer science students. We actually have 10 different degree programs at Rice that are a part of the capstone program as an elective or required capstone course. And we actually have this semester uh, over 10 majors represented in the capstone class. So this capstone is the culmination of the data science minor, which is the undergraduate data science degree program at Weiss, as well as the newly uh, formed master of data science degree. And because of this, there's a lot of growth in both of these programs and the capstone, we're gonna have many more projects and many more teams presenting results each semester. We're super excited to be back in person so that the students can present their results today. Uh, find my clicker. Um, so before we get started, so um, in this introductory session, we're actually going to hear elevator pitches from each of our capstone teams. Um, and I, and I want to first thank our partners and our sponsors for all of our projects from this semester, especially our corporate um, partners, Bill.com and Belvedere Trading, and many others. So thanks very much for your support. So uh, in the D2K uh, capstone, this is actually a competition for the students. So they will actually be competing, competing for first prize, an honorable mention, and also you as the audience have the opportunity to vote for your audience choice award for a capstone team. And there's a lot of posters out there, but we asked our capstone teams to present elevator pitches, one minute pitches on their projects to give you an introduction to what their project is before we break for the poster session. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hear the elevator pitches, the one minute videos from each of the capstone teams and all of the capstone students that are here, um, when your team comes up, your team information, if you could just stand up and wave so the audience can see who you are, and then I'm gonna play your video, okay? So capstone teams kind of stand up and wave um, uh, to folks before we play your video. And then of course, check out projects that you're interested in in the poster session afterwards. And our teams are going to be presented in alphabetical order here. Um, first up, Team Audubon. Colonial water bird nesting islands can be found across the globe and are important indicators of ecosystem health. Continuing research and monitoring of these species is critical to inform conservation decisions, to encourage management of habitats for the benefit of colonial water birds, and to continue to gauge the surrounding ecosystem health. Houston Audubon and partners have been working to develop drone flight protocols for monitoring nesting colonies along the Texas coast. Unfortunately, manually counting birds using drones still takes weeks of staff time. Using state-of-the-art computer vision and machine learning algorithms, we can tackle this problem. 
Here is an example of a drone image taken at Chester Island. Our algorithm is able to localize and classify birds of different species regardless of orientation, occlusion due to foliage, or crowded conditions. The different colors of the boxes represent different bird species. Here we magnify the image to show four brown pelicans sitting in some bushy terrain. Here we magnify the image to show many terns densely packed together on some sandy terrain. If you're interested in learning more about our work, please visit the Team Audubon poster. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Team Avance. Imagine helping change one person's life. Now, imagine changing a whole family's life. Avance is a nonprofit organization based in Texas that is dedicated to doing just that. In fact, they change a whole basketball arena's worth of people's lives, annually. By utilizing an innovative two-generational education system, Avance aims to put a stop to the generational cycle of poverty. In order to assist Avance's mission, we set out to learn what systems in place invoke the most change for families, as well as being able to identify what factors could put one at risk for dropping the program. With this knowledge, Avance can increase their retention rate and continue helping more and more people. Come see us at the showcase to learn more about Avance and our insights. Team BCM SIDS. In 2019, around 1,250 infants under a year old died to SIDS, or Sudden Infant Death Syndrome. The cause of SIDS is currently unknown, but our sponsors at the Baylor College of Medicine believe that it is related to the failure of an auto-resuscitation mechanism, a mechanism which causes infants to gasp in a low oxygen environment. To test this hypothesis, they designed a mouse model involving exposure to anoxic trials and a collection of breathing and heartbeat data as the mouse reacts to the trial. Our team built a pipeline to reduce this data to a set of key features and constructed statistical models to determine which of these features most strongly suggest poor mouse performance. This analysis will help determine the underlying mechanism of SIDS and may suggest possible signals of at-risk infants with the end goal of understanding and preventing SIDS deaths. To learn more about our work, stop by our poster and talk with our team. Team Belvedere. By identifying groups of stocks that trend similarly, investors can more efficiently buy sections of the market, offsetting investment risk in another area or making a targeted purchase more quickly. Team Belvedere implemented a stock classification algorithm that identifies clusters of similarly trending stocks and finds the most representative stocks of each cluster. Our method has proven effective with stocks within the same cluster in a given period tending to trend together in future periods as well. It is also easily exportable to data with different stocks and different time intervals. To adapt our methods to the unique nature of stock market data, we explored various mechanisms for clustering, determining cluster count, and waiting for recency, volatility, and other metrics of interest. For more information, check out our poster at the D2K Showcase. And team base our baddies. Picture this. You're going to watch the fireworks during orientation week, but your view is obstructed by a new building. And maybe I also want to watch the fireworks, but my view is perfectly clear because I live in that building since I own Rice. Situation like this is unequal, but in places of extreme affluence like West University Place, this unobstructed view is a reality at the expense of other populations. However, this inequality is not just present in the central quarter, but rather in community throughout all of Harris County. Understanding both personal and data-driven accounts of disparity helps our sponsor Baker rapidly lift these communities' standard of living with regard to their current status, which we call equity. We investigate trends in socioeconomic disparity in Harris County since it strikes seeking an understanding of what drives inequity. We accomplish this through supervised and unsupervised learning methods for aggregation 
and developing visualizations in R Shining to help Baker Ripley better understand their data. Thanks for watching. Come see the fireworks with us at the D2K Showcase. Team Customer Support Chatbot. I think almost all of us have used customer service from time to time, but the process isn't always as smooth as we might hope. You may think to yourself, oh, I'll just give it one more minute, but in reality, you're stuck in front of your computer for well over an hour. This process is frustrating for the customer and costly for the business. Our client, Bill.com, is facing the exact same problem every single day. With over 2.5 million customers, it's crucial for Bill.com to expedite the customer service process. To address this problem, our team aims to build an AI chatbot that can, one, give accurate and fast responses to customer questions, and two, route the conversation to a human agent if the question cannot be answered by our chatbot. We built our model with state-of-the-art natural language processing techniques, topic modeling, and neural networks. With our chatbot, there will be a lower wait time for customers, higher quality responses, and lower cost for Bill.com. We are Team Customer Service Chatbot, and come visit our booth to learn more. Team HFD. Hello, we are the Houston Fire Department Incident Prediction Team. This semester, we worked with the Houston Fire Department to leverage their data on building inspections. Every year, around 29,000 building inspections are conducted, but the vast amount of data collected is left unused. Correlations can be drawn between this data and the incidents that occur across the city of Houston. Let's say that given a new building, we know its building and business type, as well as its neighborhood. Based on trends we find with these characteristics and many more with other buildings, we could predict which fire-related incidents may occur here. Over the past semester, our team has built three tools to work hand-in-hand the model to predict incident types, a tool to aid inspectors during inspections, and a map visualization to increase incident visibility. If you're interested in learning more about our efforts in reducing fire incidents in the city of Houston, visit our booth at the D2K Showcase. Thank you. Team Pathfinders. Hi, we're Team Pathfinders. COVID-19 has taken almost 5 million lives in the past two years. Swift responses in medical treatment and infrastructure have understandably taken precedence. However, the vaccine is not the only solution needed. Scholars in the humanities have identified gaps in the world's pandemic response, such as racial disparities in diagnosis and treatment and miscommunication of medical information. The Translational Humanities for Public Health, or THPH project, is a website that aims to demonstrate the variety of humanities-based responses to the pandemic that translate academic research into actionable community interventions. The website collects and displays these responses to inspire students and scholars to make the translational step. By leveraging scalable natural language processing models for keyword extraction, we have identified project clusters with similar themes and discovered connections that would otherwise be obscured. The visualizations generated in our analysis will increase the efficacy and accessibility of the THPH website and illuminate the pathways from humanity study to real-world impact. And Team Stroke Risk. Every 40 seconds, someone in the U.S. has a stroke. Although most stroke victims can survive and successfully rehabilitate, if a patient has a recurrent or additional stroke, they are 17 times more likely to die. Therefore, early detection and mitigation of recurrent stroke is critical to reducing the overall stroke mortality rate. That's why we're working with our sponsor, UT Health, to predict recurrent strokes using machine learning. We're leveraging their database of around 5,000 stroke patients, one of the most comprehensive in the world. This database contains three different modalities of data, tabular electronic health records, brain scan images, and text of clinical notes. We can combine these three modalities using a graph framework. In the first semester of our year-long project, we've converted the EHR data into a graph, started extracting features from the image and text data, and trained some graph learning models that can effectively predict recurrent stroke. UT Health can use our model to identify at-risk patients, give them the preventative care they need, and ultimately save their lives. Stop by our booth, it's Team Stroke Risk, to learn more. OK, 
Okay, thank you very much to all those capstone teams. Um, so uh, next up is the poster session. And uh, for, first of all, uh, thanks for those joining on Zoom. There was actually several people joining remotely. Uh, for those on Zoom, we will actually have a uh, poster session, someone walking around and kind of web hosting you through the poster session. So feel free to stay on Zoom and watch the poster session. For our live audience, um, and actually those on Zoom, you can do this as well. We do have an audience choice award for both the capstone teams and the introductory data science teams. So as you're walking around and these QR codes are all over um, uh, the, the foyer, I guess, over there, um, uh, please make sure and vote for your favorite uh, team. Note that these polls close at 6.30 p.m. sharp and the award ceremony will be at 6.45. There's also food and beverages out there. So enjoy your time at the poster session and uh, let's learn some great data science today. Thank you for coming. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Boyland. I am a uh, former Rice data science student. I got my PhD from the University in 2020. A uh, huge fan of the D2K curriculum, all their projects, these uh, great opportunities for students presented here tonight. I'll be your uh, poster host walking you around. We're going to start interacting with some of the students. Um, we actually have a great turnout here tonight, so it'll be a little, uh, little pinballish, but I think we'll have a great time. So uh, let's go to our my left here, right, and see what these kids are. Students. One second. Yes. Hey, uh, I'm here with Jason Lang uh, from Team Pathfinder. Jason, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'm Jason. I'm currently a senior at Rice University. Uh, uh, Dr. And the Medical Futures Lab to uh, and the Medical Futures Lab to uh, other projects, uh, gathering a little bit of uh, data and analyzing it. So can you tell us, um, might be a little hard to get the camera in there, but maybe you can tell us about what were some of the most interesting findings, what were some of your most interesting findings? Uh, yeah, so uh, I think I'll get a little bit more projects first, but the THPH project and the website transition projects, which are projects that kind of quite simply um, classroom for clinical knowledge and research through the world. Uh, specifically, this, this website uh, COVID-19 response and And what the Medicaid uh, Lab and the THPH wanted was to find these emerging themes and connections uh, between uh, these different documents that aren't just immediately obvious to any uh, What we did was we conducted a few words in order to find out which of these documents are very closely related to each other. And I don't know if you can see here, but have this kind of uh, network graph where we conduct and we connect in some of the different projects. Uh, one of those clusters uh, found actually there was a lot of, uh, uh, of similarity on the keywords film, media, cinema, and then there was, I think there was another uh, cluster that felt a lot of race. And these are things that um, you might think about like normally, but when you're looking at the huge database projects, aren't exactly obvious. You read one paper at a time, pretty dense, and then you kind of move on. But with this sort of uh, problem, once you read one of them and you want to find the party, you can go get links to a uh, project that was personal uh, And perhaps you can also help users to the know what angle and what pathway you need to take to translate there. Very cool. And I believe you said some of this research is already available 
Uh, yeah. Sorry, what's that website again? Transhumhealth.rice.edu. Humanities articles often yes. quite jargony. Um, does that sort of play into any of your natural language processing decisions? I assume this is not standard English. Uh, right. So that's actually kind of a misconception about humanities projects. There are, of course, some documents which have been targeted, but there's plenty of other documents that projects very plain English. Because for the first piece of the project, transits, they need to be readable. Right? They need to be readable by the science or comic publisher. Readable by anybody by not some But also with that project, this is what they focused on. So we actually took a pre trained model that was trained on a lot of jargon. So you see, if you you don't typically hear about a pandemic or virus or a virus pandemic before 2019, but we um, use a free trade model that was able to have a better idea of what words and computers are saying. Well, thank you so much for your time. We'll let you get back to talk to all your other place to attend. We'll move on to somewhere else. Great. Oh, well, I'll okay, take us off mute. Hey, I am here with uh, Team HFD. This was the seventh team you heard from in the main session, and uh, we'd like to hear a little bit more about your project. Welcome to the presentation for uh, Team HFD. And essentially, uh, what we've done is taken data on building inspections across the city of Houston, as well as what incidents occurred across the city, and correlated the group so that we can build predictions from one to the other. Which is so, can you talk to us about what did that input data look like? Right. So, the input data. Uh, yeah, uh, so, the input data was. Uh, I mean, it was there in some cases, but it was like, for example, since the guidebooks and the long queue. So some of the data, it showed that the data was in Libya or Egypt. So that wasn't the case. So the GPS part is completely messed up, and we had to start from scratch by uh, locating latitude and longitude and uh, remapping it from scratch instead of using the base latitude and longitude. Okay, so geospatial data. Mm -hmm. What else? Okay, so building use, building use, uh, as well as the area, uh, so the of the 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 or, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then with the incidents, the data is there, just like all the possible incidents that HFD used. Uh, this would be like an actual house fire, but it could also be something like a false alarm or carbon monoxide uh, detectors. Uh, that's essentially what the data consists of. What we did with it was try to build a prediction. So, uh, of that data, sort of what features proved to be the most helpful, most informative in your predictions? Right. Uh, so, for our uh, random forest prediction, we mainly focused on what type of building it was and where it was. We saw a lot of correlation with specific resources and what incident would occur there. 
for example, around Rice University, when he inputted Rice University prep, we got more chemical related, carbon monoxide related incidents. We don't see like that many actual fires here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's basically what type of building we see like a strong correlation. Uh, ಡೌನ್ಟೌನ್ರಿಯ It is completely different. Might be an exception. Yeah, that's the only exception. Uh, but we can see with the more affluent areas, like we uh, also have less incidents, but it could also mean that the population density here itself is higher since uh, there's smaller houses and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Fair enough. Um, maybe one last question. How do your partners at the Houston Fire Department, how are they planning to act on your insights? Uh, so, uh, I recommended the... Uh, Yeah. <laughs> 
all the questions on their each department. Uh, for example, this um, defense department happens to be very open because there are four questions right here. And in this yellow cluster, you'll see that we have questions like where to find my research data, which is data, 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 data
there's another example of it answering a specific question. And it's also able to end the conversation when it's appropriate. Cool. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Thank you all so much for your time. Uh, it's a really great project. I think we're probably going to poke around. But super impressive work. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome back, everyone. I'm here with uh, two members of Team Belvedere. Uh, why don't you first tell us uh, about yourself? Get right. What are you studying? Yes. Hi, my name is Oscar. I'm currently a senior uh, at Rice University from Carl's College. Uh, my major is statistics and economics, and uh, I decided to be a part of Team Belvedere and Zoe. Hey guys, my name is Zoe Bing. I'm a I'm a speaker at Zoe College. My major is computer science. Okay, perfect. So, um, why don't you tell us uh, first, maybe two minutes about your sponsor? Who is Belvedere Trading? Yes, Belvedere Trading is a proprietary trading organization in Chicago that is a market maker. So, the goal of the firm is basically to use massive scale of trading and try to like hedge their portfolios against the risk and to get a return for their investors. So, our goal is to help them develop a framework to actually foster. Uh, all the different stocks in one bundle to help us diversify their portfolio, making more decisions, and as well as mitigating their trading risks. So, financial sectors, right? Semiconductors, you know, energy utilities. These are really well-known clusters. Um, why are you clustering, you know, from scratch? Yes. So traditionally, the industry-based clustering. It's proven uh, to be a little bit flawed because uh, in hedge funds like Belvedere Trading, sometimes they were resulting, uh, sometimes they rely on the stocks clustering with higher correlation of between clusters. Sometimes the industry stocks are not necessarily super correlated to be beneficial for hedge funds like that. So our goal is to actually identify the true correlation between some of the asset classes and to find out how they're doing. Cool. So, can you say a little bit about um, specifically how your data being financial data sort of played into your analysis? Yeah, our data is actually pulled from the open source, not to find that. And so, our data includes the ISO 8500, the ISO 8500 is the stock market index, and we also include the Russell technology, also Stock market index that contains 2,000 stocks. Um, these companies invest. And all these data are collected in 10 years. We divide them into 2,500 times. And then, sort of just K means on the returns, or maybe something a little more financial. Yeah, so that's the model. It's actually separated from the delivery part. And can you say, um, how did you evaluate the importance, the financial impact, the relevance of your uh, inferred clustering? So, the main thing that we look at actually summarizes the correlation of all the asset classes in uh, you know, the correlation of the asset uh, clusters being with itself to the other clusters, or if you have actually deserved other results. Uh, based on our clustering effectiveness, as you can see, the uh, uh, correlation of clusters are very, very high, while the uh, 
uh, sorry, the, uh, the correlation of, of the cluster itself are very high, while the correlation of three clusters are very low. So this further proves our method is actually important. And I think that 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 to, you know, uh, maybe a uh, data set for longer time span to further screen. Uh, well, fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. I see professors Barkman, uh, Barkman and Chen are here to uh, talk to you about your final product, so I'll let you go talk to them. Okay, thank you again so much. Yeah, you're good. Oh, now you're good. I'm on Zoom. Hello, people on Zoom. What am I supposed to be talking about? Maybe talk about how to get involved with D2K if you're not already an affiliate. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, D2K, again, is a data science center. Uh, D2K is a data science center focused on education, real world uh, data science experiences. Uh, we're always looking for partners who have really awesome uh, data science and machine learning challenges and hard data sets to work with so that our student teams can get these real world immersive data science experiences. So we have a partnership program where external folks, companies, community partners, researchers can sponsor capstone teams. We'd love to see more sponsors. There's gonna be a lot more capstone teams in the future. Um, so what's the timeline for step? Is it timeline is, um, so email D2K if you're interested, D2K at rice.edu and we can get you information. The timeline to set up these projects is we typically go about three to four months before the semester begins, especially when we're working with new partners. We want to meet with you. We want to set up the project well, make sure it's scoped out, make sure the data is in place, and then we get all agreements signed and we're ready to go for the semester. And you can always work. We have some people that work for just one semester. Some people work with us for the whole year, fall and spring semester as well. Fair enough. And are there any other ways for... Uh... There's lots of involved? other ways to get involved. Uh, it, for rights alums, we're always looking for people to come back to mentor and judge competitions like this and other ones. For companies, we also have sponsorship of the Rice Data Fun and Pack Rice Fun. We have long competitions in data science. The Rice Data Fun is actually coming up in January, January 21st, and it'll be a lot of fun. Um, we already have lots of students signed up. It's going to be a packed house, so it'll be a fun competition. Fair enough. And if I want to just uh, stay in touch and to continue to hear updates from D2K? If you want to continue to hear updates from D2K, we have a mailing list. You can sign up for it from our website or, again, just email us and we can add you to the mailing list. Uh, we send monthly newsletters to all of our external partners, but we also have lots of other ways to engage as well. Fantastic. Well, I know you've got a lot to do tonight, Professor Allen, so thank you so much for your time. Thanks for folks on Zoom. Okay, I am here with two members of Team BCM6, uh, Ari and Zidlu. Um, first one, tell me a little bit about yourself. You're rice students. What year? What are you studying? Uh, I'm a uh, junior undergraduate. I'm studying applied mathematics and the part of the I'm a professional master. Okay, this is uh, both your first experience with the UK or? Yeah. Okay, so uh, why don't you tell us a little about uh, your, the goals of your project? So, Baylor College of Medicine is investigating SIDS, the Infant Syndrome. So, that's when uh, there's babies, human babies, sometimes they go on their stomach and they fail to uh, their reflex to turn over males. So, uh, we're Baylor looks at it with mice to see which users are uh, most important in how we can predict safety. Okay. So the use of mice assumes a genetic basis for this disease. That, that's fair, right? We're not looking for environmental or toxicological or anything like that, right? So um, do you or Spongebob have sort of a genetic basis in mind, or are they just hoping that they're going to stumble on one, you know, by one. Yeah, yeah. So they're able to genetically identify the make them have data. Okay. They think there's a, so there is a known specific genetic basis. Yes. So they, they were able to 
find uh, certain things that made it more likely for mice to have seeds. They're not willing to say that that's enough. All right. So, um, so, so, what features are you looking at after today? Is it gene interaction? What's the nature of your So you're actually studying the the apnea process, not the gotcha. So all these features like uh, recovery time or every time we breath, mean breath volume. Okay, so it's a really really intense cardiopulmonary kind of data. Very cool. Um, can you uh, just say a little bit about what once you've done that signal processing and feature extraction, kind of what statistical techniques have you found useful? So we looked at some basic Pearson correlation. We actually found that the heart rate was way more significant than anticipated uh, different heart features, which is interesting because there is a community theory about sleep that's not mainly about the breaths, it's more about uh, the cardiovascular system. And then we also have some, uh, we have some personal hazard about that backside of it's hard to explain without the visual. Yeah, we're doing we're doing what we can. Um, so you you generate these great insights. You really made a strong push for the cardiovascular theory, like you said. What are next steps for your team? If you continue, what are next steps for your research partners? Clearly, you know, there's more to be done. We just have over 100 experimental periods in this study. However, they are the rebuilding their system to be able to experiment with the same device. Uh, at the same time, traditionally, so they will have a lot of data for producing more data, a lot of more data than they look to use over to the box and all the process and all the uh, identities to have all these quality and correlation as Study really strong preliminary results pointing them in, in a direction like a real clinical we'll clinical final. That's really exciting. Okay, that is super cool work. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to move on. I know you've got a huge crowd here wanting to hear more about your projects, but it is awesome to know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Vote for Team Six. Okay, welcome back, everybody. We are here with uh, Team Audubon. Uh, this is the work of Houston Audubon. I saw just a hint of their preliminary results, um, and I'm super excited to talk to them now. Uh, why uh, y'all give us, you know, like the, the ones where, what are you doing? What's your project? You see the word. Okay. So, uh, essentially, the title of our thing is Development of Machine Learning Algorithms for Precision Water Burger. What does that mean? So, Houston Audubon 
in the past has been monitoring these birds by actually going out on birds and manually looking out and counting birds and saying, hey, there's about a hundred laughing birds over here, about a thousand um, birds over here. And um, that process is really slow and inaccurate. Uh, but with drones, that's kind of changing up the game. We can now fly drones over these islands to have a better look at these birds and have a more accurate count. The problem here is we still need humans to go and be like, that's a bird, that's a bird, that's not a bird. And that's not the most efficient thing. So what we've done is develop state of the art kind of computer vision algorithms to automate this process. Fantastic. So um, I'm going to be really embarrassing. He said islands. I've not lived in Houston all my life, but as far as I know, there are no islands. What are we talking about? I guess for this particular data set, we're talking about Shepherd Island. I am not the expert over here, but Richard is. <laughs> Hi, Richard. <laughs> there are so many islands. <laughs> uh, we've got, uh, first of all, the Intercoastal Waterway. So when they direct the giant channel from uh, you know, South Texas all the way to the East Coast, they, they have all these islands that were built. Uh, they have to kill some. The birds love nesting on them. Natural islands and adults are always dreading to kill them. Birds love nesting on them because they're away from predators. Uh, it's a good place. It's close to all the places. So they're a great place to fly. All the wild biologists are every year. They also have to keep up with how many birds there are uh, and use that as environmental uh, system. Fair enough. So, uh, how are the birds in the Texas region doing? Do we want to? Some are doing okay. Some are not doing so great. And the more precise data that we have, then the stronger case we make. Yeah, the case of the Fair enough. So, like, uh, how long did it take you to do one of these studies, Daniel? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the terrible old days before yeah. the G2K future. Hopefully, Anna is out there uh, in Dreamland in Seattle, but uh, it took her about two weeks. Uh, uh, you know, eight hours a day accounting for one by one annotating data to say lab brown pollock lab and, and you know these are thousands and thousands of birds and the times we can be much more efficiently other than coming in with like uh, uh, what what landmass are we talking about Elgin Island here in Elgin Galaxy uh, 48 acres. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. 120 acres. There we go. 120 acres. Yeah. There's birds all over. The most important bird in the island is the island. And uh, now with your new system, what is this? Is right. so, I think the drone, the drone like, must have taken around the order of like a couple of hours. Um, so, you know, maybe a, 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 let's say eight hours to actually fly the drone, drones over the island and collect all that data. But as far as uh, the detection part is, using our trained algorithm, um, for 170 images, uh, it took about two hours to put out all the uh, detection. Maybe less. Yeah. And I'm assuming that the ne you know, near contemporaneous fast drone flights also really helps improve the quality of that count. Exactly. Right. So these, yeah, the drones that we're using going out are still uh, kind of the heavier drones because we want to get those you know, nice kind of quality images. Um, but in the future, the whole thing is that models can use you know, lower resolution cameras to be lighter, and the drone flight can be quicker. Fair enough. So, so this is really cutting edge, cool machine learning. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about you know, the nuts and bolts of exactly what you did? Yeah. So as far as the methodology is concerned, um, what we're using is kind of state-of-the-art deep learning uh, object detectors. For those of you who know about object detectors, there's all sorts of different architectures that researchers have developed. We particularly have used Doster RCMN and RedNet. I'll refer to those papers uh, if you're curious about the nuts and bolts. Um, but essentially, what these models will do is take an image in and output a box or box coordinate as well as a CPU label. And okay, so, it, so one system does both. One system does both. That's really cool. Very cool and um, accurate, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right there, right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. That's amazing. It's to the point of, I don't believe it. It shouldn't look like Nebraska. But, <laughs> but, uh, but it does. And so we've checked it out and it's amazing. The, you know, the, uh, the accuracy of, of the algorithm 
is uh, is really really impressive to the point where it's used. Because if it's not, we're like, yeah, we can do better with our with our eyeballs. Fair enough. So going forward, now that you can process this data more or less real time, um, how often do you expect to do this? This will be an annual survey. Unless we want to do random chats. So the Texas Coast is uh, one of the most important places in the world for testing for wintering birds. Uh, places like uh, East Beach, Galveston, all of the flats across the bay. So you can also train it, uh, you know, to do wintering counts, roosting counts. And so, and so why stop with birds? You could do, you could do migrating uh, stingrays, all sorts of things. Same thing, thing land animals. animals, you could go over to occupy. You can get to Serengeti and and do the same kind of count and count wildebeest. Yeah, that is that is very very cool. And um, cool. Okay. Um, I don't know. Tell me something else I haven't asked yet. <laughs> it's just so cool. I just want to hear more and more. So we do have a lot of pretty images. I'm not sure if we can see them over Zoom. It'll be a iPad going into the camera. But some of the future stuff that we mentioned was trying to get this, you know, sure, it's good for the students to develop the code and run the code, but can we really get people out of on it? But can we get people in the, you know, the continental or even the world to use our company, not just for herds, but for mammals, and really make this a, uh, an approach that's not just a problem for one thing, but for everybody. That's what we really want to achieve, making sure that um, the technology that we develop can scale to everybody. That, that is fantastic research. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us. I'm sure Sarah from Zoom, thanks you for saving her so much time. And uh, yeah, this is awesome. I hope it's all the impression of Ford. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Don't forget to vote. Yeah, don't forget to vote. Team Audubon. Okay, good people of Zoom. We are almost out of battery, so we're going to send you back to the main feed. In about 10 minutes, I believe, we're getting back to closing ceremonies. Thank you so much for joining with us. Uh, the feed will show the Zoom links, uh, sorry, the QR codes, the voting links. Uh, we're so excited, and thank you for bearing with us. We're still working out all the kinks, but uh, so excited to have you here with us tonight. And go D2K. Okay. Okay, hello folks. Uh, thanks for coming back in to the award ceremony of the D2K Showcase. First, let's just give a round of applause for all the students that presented today. Some really fantastic and inspiring work here. Um, and we're just really proud of all the students um, and their work today. Uh, so the award ceremony, we're going to be announcing an audience choice award for both the introductory data science teams and the capstone teams. The audience choice award is $50 for each team member. There will also be an honorable mention and a first place award for the capstone team. That's, um, I'm not sure where the sound's coming from. That's a $100 award and a $250 award per teammate um, uh, uh, for those capstone teams. So to, um, and now this isn't working, okay. Uh, okay, technical difficulties. Uh, 30 seconds of suspense right here. Okay. Uh, Apologies, now I have to reshare for those folks that have hung around on Zoom. Okay, I think we're back in action. Whew. Okay, so, um, <laughs> okay. So to announce the audience choice winner for the introductory teams, we have the instructor for that course, uh, Su Chen. Okay, all right. So the audience choice award goes to um, Team Airbnb Bros. Yay!
Oh, okay. And yeah. Take, I'll have you take a, here, I'll, I'll hold them. Sit, take a quick photo with them by themselves. You two take a photo with them. Just take a photo by themselves. <laughs> Okay, uh, congrats again to Team Airbnb. Um, okay, and to announce, um, uh, actually before we um, announce the winners of the capstone competition, this was judged, and I wanna do a quick round of thanks to all of our judges. We had three guest uh, judges uh, from uh, Mike DeSauer from a manager in data science at Westlake, um, Detlef Holt, the chief scientist of computation and data science at Shell, and Harsh Bora, a senior data scientist at Crowley. And thanks also to our four uh, Rice judges. We had Ben Hu, an associate professor in computer science, Elizabeth McGuffey, an assistant teaching professor in statistics, Cesar Uribe, an assistant professor in electrical and computer engineering, and Angela Wilkins, the executive director of the Ken Kennedy Institute. So thanks very much to our judges who helped judge the capstone competition. Let's give a quick round of applause for our judges. And to introduce the prizes for the capstone team, I want to first acknowledge the instructors for our capstone course who did a fantastic job mentoring the teams uh, this, oh, sorry, I was told that they couldn't hear me uh, because of the mask on Zoom, sorry about that. Um, so I wanna make sure uh, and uh, introduce and acknowledge the instructors who did a great job mentoring the capstone teams this semester. Um, Dr. Arka Barman, is an assistant professor in the D2K lab. Um, and uh, very soon to be Dr. Anderson Cheng is a fifth year PhD student in statistics. <laughs> and Arco is going to be announcing the winners for our capstone teams. Arco, take it away. All right, um, the audience choice award goes to Base Our Baddies. All right, congratulations to Base Our Baddies. Now on to honorable mention. Honorable mention goes to Team Stroke Risk. <laughs> Applause. All right, now for the big award. The winner is Team Audubon. All right, a big round of applause for all the other teams as well. We've all done a great job. Thank you, everyone. So thank you again for 
everybody coming uh, to the showcase. Um, I think this was a great event. Um, just thrilled to have this in person again after so much time. And um, for folks that were here, external folks, if you'd love to, we'd love to connect with you to understand if you have data science challenges um, that we can partner with and give students these real world opportunities like you've seen today. Um, there's still plenty of food out there and posters and data science, so please make sure to stop by and congratulate the winning teams. Thank you so much again for coming.